Hello, I'm really pleased to welcome you to Caffrey's beautiful Greenmount campus, which is only 20 miles from Belfast and halfway between the historic town of Antrim and Belfast International Airport. I'm standing outside this very impressive manor house, which opened its doors to its first students in 1912. It has grown considerably since then, with over 1,000 students now studying a range of courses in agriculture, horticulture, floristry, land-based engineering and veterinary nursing. Greenmount really has superb facilities. This combined with staff that have a very close association with the agri-food industry has led to Greenmount having an internationally recognised reputation for excellence. In fact, many of the leaders in the agri-food industry today have passed through these doors and accredit Greenmount for their success. But perhaps more importantly, it wasn't just the learning they remember, but the lifelong friends and crack they had while they were students here. And that hasn't changed. The campus is still buzzing and there is a real sense of community spirit here which people will remember long after they graduate. It is a beautiful place to study with a lot of investment in teaching and learning resources and it doesn't stop there. Over the next number of years there will be even more investment in new staff and student accommodation and science facilities. Greenmount really is the place to be and has lots to offer so welcome and I hope you enjoy our virtual tour. Good evening, um, my name is Paul Moody and I'm Head of Horticulture and based at Greenman Campus here just outside Antrim. It's my great pleasure to welcome you along to our virtual Horticulture Open Day event for 2020. Now more normally at this time of year, or maybe slightly earlier, we'd have you along to the campus to see some of the great facilities we have that we use in teaching our students, to meet some of our very expert uh, and diligent staff, to hear from some of our students part-time, full-time, those in residence, those not in residence, um, young, old, etc., to get a total feel for the campus. But alas, that is not possible this year, so we hope you get something similar out of our virtual open day. So I'll start maybe by explaining a little bit about CAFRI. CAFRI stands for the College of Agriculture, Food and Rural Enterprise, and it's an integral part of the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development uh, for Northern Ireland. CAFRI has three campuses. In the west, we have Enniskillen campus that focuses on all matters equine related, horses. Um, near Cookstown, we have Lockery campus, focuses on food. And then Greenmount here focuses on both agriculture, which includes agricultural engineering and veterinary nursing, and indeed horticulture, which focuses on, uh, on horticulture, uh, which includes floristry. Um, Many people come in, sorry, tonight's virtual open evening will last about 40 minutes um, and we hope that you'll participate. You can ask questions online um, and we'll get answers to you. And if there's a few questions and we have time, we'll take them live. So why horticulture? Well, many people come into horticulture having experienced the joy of, of growing some plants from seeds or maybe taking a cutting that's rooted or doing up a, a small piece of land or a garden and getting the great joy of that. But in reality, horticulture is so much more than gardening. It's a true profession and it is possible now to be a chartered horticulturist, similar to a chartered architect or engineer. And no matter where your passion lies, your interest lies, there is a role in horticulture for you. If it's science and technology that interests you, well, you could be a horticultural scientist or a teacher or an advisor. If you're interested in art and design, well, why not a garden designer or a landscaper? If you're interested in business and production and food, well, why not a producer of plants growing thousands and thousands of uniform, high-quality plants using robotics, uh, high-quality engineering under protected environments? If it's heritage and, con heritage and conservation that interests you, well, perhaps there's a role in the National Trust as a gardens advisor or a gardener. If it's sports and leisure, maybe a greenkeeper or a grounds person. If it's health and well-being, there's roles in horticultural therapy. So horticulture is hugely diverse uh, and most people can find a niche or indeed throughout their career several niches that they, they use and pass through. 
This evening I'm joined by two colleagues. On my right, I have Laurie Hartman, who's Senior Lecturer in Further Education, in charge of Further Education. And on my left is David Dowd, who's Senior Lecturer in Charge of Higher Education. So I'm going to turn to Laurie first. Laurie, could you tell us a little bit about how you got into horticulture and what experiences you've had to date? Paul, um, I grew up in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia in the US. And, and so that's just an area of great beauty. And I think I just loved being outdoors. And that led me to look for some sort of career where my office wouldn't be inside. Um, so through university, I found horticulture. Um, but after that, I wanted to gain even more experience. Uh, so I got a, sort of a student job role in Scotland at a garden there and worked there for a year and got more practical experience on top of my university studies. Um, Eventually, I found my way to Northern Ireland, and since being here, I've had a number of job roles in horticulture, from a television horticulture researcher for a gardening program. Um, I've managed a few education programs that had an environmental or horticulture focus, and then eventually, I found my way to, to Caffrey as a lecturer, um, and then as an advisor for soft fruit and veg production, uh, and then eventually this role, managing the further education program. Okay, quite a few roles, which just illustrates the point I've been making. Very, very varied is horticulture. David, what about yourself? Well, Paul, I'm originally from County Kildare, and uh, when I graduated from college, I started working in banking. Um, but on the weekends, I was doing a lot of paid and voluntary work in horticulture. I have uh, family connections in the horticulture industry. Um, so after a couple of years working in banking, I found, well, actually, I'd much preferred what I was doing on the weekends to my Monday through Friday, and I decided to change career and go into horticulture full time. Uh, so I was advised by people, look, you really need to get a qualification. So I went to the Botanic Gardens and I did a degree in horticulture. After that, then I did a master's in sustainable development. And um, since then, I've been working in a number of roles uh, in conservation, historic gardens, garden centre retail. And th then I moved into education and started working here at Caffrey as a lecturer. And I'm now the senior lecturer in charge of higher education here at Caffrey. Again, a very varied career path. Definitely. It's interesting you started your life uh, banking and finance and then changed yes. to horticulture. And that, that's quite common in horticulture, the way people start maybe, uh, and they completely change their career from, from something that they, maybe they were interested in horticulture initially and, and mm -hmm. whatever, just they didn't pursue that career. They went into something else and then they changed later on. So, so it's a very typical. Okay, Laurie, uh, back to you. We're going to explore further education. What is further education? And in your view, why would somebody choose to do a further education course in horticulture? Well, Paul, further education is basically the vocational alternative to doing your A-levels if you're coming straight from your GCSEs. Um, it's really for people who have an interest in working outside, um, who have found horticulture and are interested in it but want more practical experience. And so that's really what the strength of further education is in our programs. Yeah, and it follows on from GCSE mm -hmm. instead of pursuing A-levels. So tell us about the courses we have uh, on offer at, at Greenman Campus in horticulture. Uh, well, we've got two full-time courses, both of which are validated by city and guilds. Um, so our level two program is largely practical. Um, students, it's, it's a year-long program, and I think that's what students like the most about it, is that you are out doing practical work probably about 70% of the time that you're here. There is some theory as well, but it's all you know, quite closely linked. Um, and students really enjoy that. It's probably as close to sort of working in a garden while doing your education as you can get. Um, yeah, and it very much follows the Caffrey ethos of learn by doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so level three is also very practical, but it becomes more of like a 50-50 mix of practical and theory. Uh, the level three program is a bit longer. It's two years, and within that, we cover a broad range of horticultural topics from production to garden design to um, science and construction. So there's, there's a real big range there. Okay. And then students also have some work experience between years one and two. So, so what about progression? Where do, where do students go having finished a level two and indeed a level three? At level two, students are set up to go into an entry level uh, role in any sort of horticulture business. Um, whereas at level three, you're more at a supervisory level. Um, so, I mean, with either course, it could be garden centers, there may be roles within councils, 
um, within some of our production nurseries across Northern Ireland as well. Sure. So. Okay. So, Laurie, the costs of attending these courses, are there fees? For further education, there are no course fees, which is brilliant. Um, the only fees people would incur are just their day-to-day -day travel to and from campus. Uh, if they choose to stay on campus, there's accommodation, accommodation fees and that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. And are there maintenance awards or, or grants available? There are grants. Uh, they are through the Education Authority and they're means tested. Um, so I believe there's a link on the CAFRI website that takes you to the Education Authority page where you can apply. Okay, uh, and, and there's lots more information on the website, Laurie, um, about both of these programs and a lot more detail. Yes, indeed. Including yeah. how to apply. Right, um, we're now, I think, we're going to meet a student of yours, a Level 3 student called Rebecca uh, Rathbone, mm -hmm. and we're going to explore with Rebecca her journey into horticulture. I introduce Rebecca Rathbone, who is currently a student on our Level 3 horticulture program. Um, so. Just to start us off, Rebecca, can you tell me a little bit about how you even discovered horticulture as an option for study or for a career? Yeah, um, uh, personally, I was always interested in alternative herbal medicines and making my own uh, cosmetics. And through that, I um, was talking to some friends that actually had been studying horticulture. And it was through them I realized that it was a career path that I could um, do that I was passionate about so that really excited me oh that's cool mm -hmm. and then so you had that interest what made you decide to choose Caffrey as your place of study um, well my auntie knew I was looking for somewhere to study th this course and it, she just happened to be in Glen Bay Gardens and noticed that there were students doing uh, work experience there that were from Caffra so she had a quick conversation with them and they recommended it they said it was the best place so I did a bit of research myself and I found the facilities that CAFRA had to offer and the courses was something that was right up my alley. So oh, that's, that's how I came to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to get that recommendation from somebody else as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just sort of adds to the course, I think. Um, so you applied, you got here and now you're on this two year program of study. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you find it in reality, you know, how, how is the course delivered? Yeah, um, well, the course is great because it combines the practical element of horticulture with the theory. So you get a full round of experience. Um, I really enjoy it because we every day you're outside working with your hands and getting experience using different lawnmowers, um, different types of tools, the best way to use those tools. So I really enjoy it. It's a fantastic way to learn, definitely. That's great. And I think um, it's nice to hear that you do get experience on the course and that you find that useful. Um, yeah. But I think as well, part of the course is also to have a work experience uh, throughout the summer between years one and two. And I think um, you had a really nice experience this summer. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you found that work experience option and a little bit about what you actually did? Yeah, um, so it was actually through a CAFRA careers day um, that I found the work experience and it was through a private estate um, in Tyrone. Um, I was able to do six weeks there, um, which was great because I had no experience prior and I learned a lot. So we actually had a great transfer of skills that we learned at CAFRA that I was actually using on the estates um, from pruning, edging, weeding and mowing the lawn. Um, but it was a fantastic experience because it let me hone in on what I really needed to focus on and improve and also let me see what I was already good at. So it was a good experience. Yeah, well, that's brilliant. I'm glad it worked out for you. So um, so now you're back, you're on year two mm -hmm. and you'll be finishing up in sort of May time. Have you thought ahead to that point and thought, you know, what your pathway will be after the level three program? Um, yeah, initially I, I knew, well, I thought that I wanted to do something in uh, with public parks or in a botanical garden, but with second year, we've been doing a course called garden design and I really enjoy that. So that's kind of opened up a whole new avenue of options for me to explore. Yeah. So I guess the good thing is you've got some time to think about it. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, you know, level three does set you up for either going down that employment route or coming back to CAFRI 
and doing further study. So we'll okay. watch the space. Yeah, thank you. So good luck and thank you so much for talking to me today. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. So that's Rebecca's journey. Um, interesting again to see somebody who came in with very clear career aspirations, want to work in a botanic garden, and then through experience has decided, well, maybe not, maybe it's garden design. And who knows when Rebecca finishes her program, what, what area of interest she'll be following. Interesting also, Rebecca's from County Donegal. And just to say that students from uh, the Republic of Ireland are treating the exact same way in terms of fees uh, and charges for CAFRI courses. I'll turn to David now at this stage. David, we'll start the same as Laurie here. Can you tell us a little bit about what higher education is and what courses we offer okay. in horticulture at Caffrey? Okay, so higher education is the next step in the educational journey uh, for people who have completed their A-levels or it could be people coming out of further education who have completed level three, for example, in uh, horticulture. So we'll have level three students who progress onto our foundation degree course here at Caffrey. Um, so why would you choose to do higher education courses? Well, it's, it's more academic, it's more focused in terms of the, uh, the study that you're doing. Um, and as well as that, in terms of career, career progression, uh, you after you graduate, you can go for uh, technical roles and managerial roles. Uh, and as well as that, you also have a lot of opportunities then for travel um, because there's a shortage of skilled, qualified people out there in the uni okay. industry. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the foundation degree program. Okay, so the foundation degree program that we offer here, it's a two-year course for full-time students and it's a four-year course for part-time students. Um, the course is validated by Ulster University. Uh, so that means that when you qualify, you're coming out with a degree from Ulster. Um, and then as well as that, as an associate student with Ulster, uh, with Ulster, you get all the benefits that you would have as a student there. Um, you, you mentioned part-time students, so do many part-time students undertake the foundation degree? Yes, um, part-time students, we have quite a number of people come onto the course, so a bit like myself, so you'll have a lot of people who are career changers, so they'll have some um, experience in the industry and they decide to make uh, horticulture their, their primary career, so they'll come on the course. Uh, but as well as that, we also have a lot of students who are already working in the industry and they want to increase their skills and their knowledge so they come onto the part-time course and that aids them say for example if they want to get promotion that sort of thing yeah. so having that qualification is a real benefit the qualification is the key to the, the, to the next the key, level yes. okay um after somebody completes the foundation degree where to next well there, there's two routes really um they can go down the uh, academic route and if they decide to continue on with their studies uh, up until now they would have had to go over to england to do an honors degree uh, but we plan that in 2021 here at caffrey we're going to be offering a top-up degree so a one-year full-time top-up degree so uh, students will be able to uh, continue on with their studies here in northern ireland which will be a great great advantage um, then Professionally, then our students go into a whole range of different areas, uh, technical roles, managerial roles, and then actually quite a few of them will go in down the self-employed route. Um, because the course, the subject areas we cover is quite diverse, so that means our students go into a whole diverse range of uh, areas as well. So that could be horticultural therapy, that could be production, that could be sales. So yeah. a very broad range the of career choices. And people can follow their, their own interests and their passions yes, yeah. and still work in horticulture. Are there tuition fees for these programs? Um, for the full-time program, yes, there's tuition fees, but they're very competitive. So for a full-time student, uh, the fees are just over £1,700 a year. And for part-time students, there, there are no uh, fees at all. No fees for part-time? No fees, no. Okay, excellent. Um, and there's more information uh, on the website? Certainly, yes. If you go onto our website, uh, you have a webinar up there and you can, that gives you information about the course and then there's details about the entry criteria and all of that can be found on our website. Okay, excellent. Um, so it's really exciting that there's a new honours top-up degree in the pipeline, all going well for September 2021, um, and people will be able to progress from foundation degree right up to top-up degree. So, so that means that CAFRI has a route from, from Laurie's Level 3 programme to foundation degree, and finally to honours degree. Definitely, yes. At yeah. Greenman Campus. Excellent. Okay. 
Um, we're going to move on now to, to have a look around the campus, um, uh, have a bit of a virtual tour with Paul Campbell, who's the third senior lecturer involved in horticultural education. Um, and I think you'll be impressed with some of the things Paul is about to show you. My name is Paul Campbell and I'm a senior lecturer in horticulture here at Caffrey Greenmount campus. Horticulture, as you probably have already realised, is a very practical hands-on area of study. Yes, you'll be in the classroom. Yes, you'll have reports to write, assessments to complete and presentations to prepare during your time here. But at the end of the day, following a successful career path requires you to be able to do hands-on professional jobs. That job could be landscaping, commercial horticulture, crop production, greenkeeping, garden design, are a host of other niche areas in this wide range of industry. Let me take you through on a whistle stop tour of the facilities that will be available to you. Here we are at the sports turf area of the campus. Within the sports turf area we have our fine turf facilities, mostly used by students hoping to work in the golf course greenkeeping industry. This golf course in miniature has three full size golf holes built to what's known as the USGA standard. A large chipping green surrounded by a range of bunker styles, parkland, revetted, putt, Spanish and splash, as well as an indoor driving range with target greens and bunkers filled with synthetic sand. For the groundsmen, our pitch complex is maintained to international standards. Students get involved in the maintenance of all these facilities and often work alongside our in-house grounds team. They use the most up-to-date machinery, including precision mowers, laser line markers, and on occasion, they help out Big Mo a robotic mower who works tirelessly to keep our turf right up there with a world-class category. If your interests are drawn more towards commercial production and horticulture, you'll have the opportunity to learn at the Horticulture Centre, which is made up of three subsections, the Protected Crop Unit, the Hardy Ornamental Nursery Stock Unit, and the Biosecurity Unit. The Protected Crop and Hardy Ornamental Units are used for edibles, and ornamental crops and comprise of six separate computer controlled glass houses, Dutch light glass houses, poly tunnels and standing out areas for hardy ornamentals. A range of irrigation systems are used including traditional overhead through to ebb and flow systems. Also the HC operates a fully automated potting line which mirrors what you as a graduate will encounter in industry should you opt for this production pathway. The centre is equipped with the latest renewable energy technologies such as wind turbines, biomass boilers and solar panels, keeping your learning experience as contemporary as possible. For some, horticultural skills are all about the production and management of plants. However, for those of you who are aspiring to enter into the world of landscaping, a working knowledge of how to develop and maintain the hard aspects of the business, that's walls, fences, paving, water features and pathways is essential. Here at the landscape area, students get the opportunity to design, plan, build and maintain these hard features. During your time here, either as an individual or as a small group, you'll be allocated a mock garden plot where you'll set out, construct your own garden design. You'll have access to a vast array of construction and finishing materials. So if you can do it at the college, you can repeat the exercise professionally with confidence. Last but not least, we come to this particular formal walled garden, or as we like to call it, our outdoor classroom. Here we have specimen trees, flowers, shrubs, and grasses, plus soft and hard landscaping. Everything you're likely to meet in a domestic setting. In the specialist rose garden, you'll find a unique collection of historic metal winning blooms. These beautiful areas provide the inspiration and know-how of growing the garden and the landscapes of tomorrow. Beautiful gardens that bring colour, scent, movement, and seasonality to our lives and enhance our houses and buildings and streets. To sum up, at Greenmount you'll have access to facilities and equipment which are cutting edge no matter what pathway you choose in a horticultural career. So there we are then, a glimpse of some of the horticultural facilities around Greenman campus with Paul Campbell. And you can see the fantastic range and most students on a lot of our programs will experience most facilities throughout their program here at Greenmount. Um, and of course these facilities, practical facilities, underpin much of our education delivery because horticulture is a very practically focused discipline. 
There's a couple of questions um, that frequently people ask, so maybe we'll just cover these at the moment. Laurie, when do courses begin and what does an average day look like for a, a student? Uh, well, the further education courses tend to start sort of the second week in September, um, with the higher education courses starting a week or so later. Um, a typical day kind of depends on what course you're on, but I think the main thing is across all our courses, there's an element of theory, but a big element of practical. Um, we've got lecturing staff, instructing staff, and they work as teams to really uh, show the students the, the range of skills that they're learning. So they've, they've got a lot of support along with these great facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in general, full-time students are here maybe four days a week? Yeah, depending on the course, it could be anywhere from three to five days a week. Okay, uh, and a lot of the part-time students just attend on a single day. Yeah. Okay. David, then, are there interviews to get onto these programs? Um, there are interviews, although w what we call them is discussions because it's, it's, it's not an interview. It's the purpose of the discussion is to really help you choose the right course for, for you. Um, so at level two, level three, and part-time uh, foundation degree, We'll, you will have a discussion uh, for full-time students they'll, uh, on foundation degree. They will be uh, applying through UCAS, uh, directly via UCAS. But as I say, the purpose of the discussion really is to make sure that you're getting onto the right course. So we'll, during discussion, we'll find out about you, what your interests are, what your qualifications are, and what your experience. And what we'll aim to do is make sure that you're getting on the right course that will get you where you want to go in so your career. Much, it's a careers advisory type interview? It's more lines of the careers advisory, yeah. Uh, and no commitment. And some people will come and, and have that chat and decide maybe it's they won't De go forward. And definitely, others will yep. say like it's the wrong course and I'll yeah. go this one instead. So my, myself and Laurie will work very closely uh, together on this. So like a lot of time, Laurie will come to me and say, look, David, I think this person would be better suited for HE. And I'll say, Laurie, this person would be better suited on FE. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, we're now going uh, with Greenman student William uh, Henry on a tour, a virtual tour of the campus facility seen from the eyes of a student. My name is William Henry and I'm a first year student here on the Foundation Degree in Agriculture and Technology course. I would like to show you around and let you see what's on offer for students who choose to live on campus. The under 18 students live in either Boyd or Fulton Hall. The bedrooms in Boyd Hall are en suite and are cosy and comfortable, while Fulton Hall has a single study bedrooms, which are shared bathroom facilities for a small number of students. The over 18 students stay in the self-catering accommodation in the student village, either in one of the bungalows or a lodge. Around 12 students live in each of the lodges and three in each of the bungalows. The bedrooms in the lodges are all en suite and there is a shared kitchen, sitting room, laundry facilities. Every evening, students living in campus accommodation are looked after by the residential support team. These staff with the Student Representative Council arrange activities for the students like going to the cinema, ice skating, various sporting activities or outings to Belfast. There is a gym in Greenmount Resource Centre and Sports Hall as well. The residential support team also look after the safety and security of students when they are on site. The main place to eat on campus is the Manor Restaurant which is open throughout the day from 8 in the morning to 6 at night and provides a great range of meals. The Cyber Cafe, which is in Greenmount Resource Centre, also offers snacks and drinks from 10 in the morning, so there's absolutely no excuse for anybody to go hungry. Most under 18 students have a cater card, which their parents or guardians preload with money so you don't have to carry cash about, which is very handy. One of the main places on campus for classes and recreation is the Greenmount Resource Centre, or as we call it, the GRC. This is where most of the classrooms, lecture theatres and IT suites are. The Student Services Manager, Leslie Ann's office is here too, and she can help with any queries or issues you may have. Also, this is where some of the residential support team are found in the evenings. The Cyber Cafe is also located in the GRC and serves food, which is also the main social hub for students to hang out. There's TVs, pool tables, football, as well as table tennis and computers to play games on. 
core to any college is the library and I have to say, all the students love the newly refurbished library here at Greenmount. It has a great selection of relevant journals and books as well as an extensive collection of e-learning materials. The library is also a great place to study if you want just a bit of peace and quiet. Greenmount is only three miles away from the town of Antrim. It has everything you will need in terms of shopping, cafes, restaurants and entertainment and it is also around 30 minutes from Belfast. When you live on campus, it is so easy to make friends and there is a real sense of community. Living away from home has made me much more independent and I love the freedom of doing my own thing. I hope you enjoyed the tour and maybe I will see you here next year. So that was a, a glimpse of campus life from a student perspective and you can see we have a lovely library and great accommodation uh, and lots of interesting things to do, the sports hall, the gym, etc. Um, one of the things that is really, really important to, to note is when people come to Caffrey, it's a bit like a family. People come and, and many people, there's over 200 bedrooms at the campus, come and stay here and, and they will make lifelong friends that will stick them throughout the rest of their lives, really, really solid friendships, which turn into industry contacts as well when people leave the campus uh, and move on. So our next video is another student. Um, this time it's a graduate, a qualified graduate, who's working in the industry. He holds the grand title of Keeper of the Walled Garden, and I'll let the video tell the tale. Adam, hello. Hey, Liz. Adam, thanks so much for joining us as part of our virtual open day. It's lovely to chat with you. No problem at all. It's my pleasure. Adam, you'll know the uh, diverse career opportunities for horticulture graduates. But for those who have a particular interest in preserving historical sites and historical places, I wonder are you the envy of your graduates right about now with the, the job that you have secured for yourself? Can you tell us where you're phoning in from and what you've been up to since graduation? Yes, yeah, so I'm really fortunate to be employed by historic royal palaces, working here at Hillsborough Castle. Um, and currently at Hillsborough Castle, I'm, I'm, my job role is the keeper of the walled garden, uh, which is just an amazing job. Uh, it involves managing a small team of gardeners, looking after the fantastic four acre, newly redeveloped walled garden providing fresh fruit and vegetables and cut flowers to the cafe and the house and any events which might be happening through the year. Sounds very exciting. Uh, it's great. And Adam, you'll know that learning by doing is the cornerstone that all of our courses across CAFRI are built on. Can you tell us how the learning by doing experiences that you got um, during your time as a student with us has set you up for your career that you're enjoying now? Well, after leaving school, uh, following my GCSEs, I progressed on to level three course at Greenmount, which just gave me such a sound foundation for such a range of aspects in horticulture. Um, it, it just gave you that, that stepping stone that, that you could then use to, pro to progress on to a variety of courses or jobs in horticulture. Um, I took the decision to progress on to the foundation degree, which then allowed me to focus in and concentrate on specific topics and modules that I could, um, that I wanted to focus on for going down my, my career path. Um, one of the things that we're very proud of at CAFRI is our links with industry, Adam, um, and they show that support through bursaries that they offer our students. You got the chance to enjoy a bursary? Yes, yes, I was um, I was fortunate to be awarded with the David Colgrave Foundation bursary, um, which helped me set up a small propagation unit at home, um, allowing me to grow and sell produce on a very small scale, but um, as something that I continue to do and continue to build on. We're also very proud of our um, the international opportunities that we can provide students both working and studying abroad. You took the opportunity to work abroad. Tell us about that. Exactly, yeah. So um, during my foundation degree, um, we were given a placement opportunity. I um, undertook this in the Netherlands, which um, was just great. I was working to a landscape gardener. And not only did it develop my horticultural knowledge, but also 
helped me on a personal level with um, teaching me independence and um, teaching me how to work with a different culture and um, learning skills that I could then bring home and, and continue to use in my everyday career. And I wonder, did that experience in the Netherlands give you itchy feet? Um, tell us about your World Skills competition that you took part in. So at the beginning of my level three, I was given the opportunity to, um, or we were all as a class given the opportunity to partake in the World Skills competition. Um, throughout that, I was um, competing in landscape gardening and began with her at the regional level and then progressed on to the national level competing and training in England. Um, we then um, teamed up as a pair, me and Will, um, to compete at an international level. Um, this consisted of competitions in um, Euroskills in Gothenburg in Sweden where we got a gold medal. Um, we trained in the Netherlands and China and then we undertook the final in Abu Dhabi where we gained a medallion of excellence. Wow. Flying the flag for horticulture, flying the flag for Caffrey and flying the flag for Team UK as well. That's some story. Yeah, well, I was provided with a lot of opportunities and um, I just I just grasped them when I, when I had the chance. Which is a really good part and message, you know, to, to show the, the variety of opportunities that there are for students who choose to pursue a career in, in horticulture. There's no doubt about that. Exactly, yeah, you do well and truly get out of it what you what you put in. Well, on behalf of Caffrey, can I congratulate you on your achievements today at Adam? It's been a joy talking to you and can I wish you all the best in your future career? Thank you very much, Liz. You're welcome, Adam. Take care. Okay, bye. Welcome back. So there's Adam and Adam's had quite a journey. Uh, at Caffrey and beyond, and who knows where Adam will end up. But um, the interesting thing about Adam is, Adam came in directly from GCSEs, uh, an able student, but decided to follow the vocational route, um, and having completed the level three, went on and did the foundation degree. And obviously has had a tremendous experience of work placements, of competition, of international travel, etc. during his time at Caffrey. Um, David, Adam mentioned that he won a bursary called the David Colgrave Bursary. What is that and are there other bursaries available to higher education students? Sure, yeah. In Caffrey here we have great industry links. Um, so we have, like apart from the David Colgrave uh, Bursary, we have three other bursaries that are open to HE students um, where they can win a thousand pounds to help pay through to pay for their studies or if they want to do travel or whatever they want to use that money for. Um, as well as that, one of the bursaries also ties into a work placement over the summer, um, when, or sorry, over when they're in semester two when they're doing their professional work placement module. Um, so that's, as, as, as well as that, actually, there's a careers day where employers come in and um, they meet with students and offer students um, employment opportunities. So it just gives you an idea of all the the great industry links we have here in the college. Yeah, okay. And Laurie, um, he also mentioned work placements uh, and work placement in Holland. Do, do most students or most courses have work placements? Yes, our level three further education course has work placement as part of the, the course units, um, as well as foundation degree. Um, and students choose a range of options. You know, some stay local, but some like to try something further afield and go to Europe or even to the US or Australia. And broadens their horizons and opens their eyes to a world of possibility. Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that really takes us towards the conclusion of our Horticultural Virtual Open Day here uh, for 2020. Horticulture is a wonderful discipline. I would encourage you, if you're thinking about horticulture, to explore it further. We have courses here at Caffrey that suit everybody. Um, they're nationally recognized qualifications. There's full and part-time options. Often, for many people, they're a better option than following vocational routes like A-levels, especially if you know exactly what you want to do and horticulture is for you. We've great industry links, we've great staff, we've great facilities. Do visit our website. There's a lot of useful information there. Do please contact us again if you have any queries whatsoever or feel free to lift the telephone to one of the senior lectures. Very happy to take calls. Um, remember David talked about careers advisory interviews. You can talk to us about your aspirations, your results, etc., etc., with, with no commitment. Um, 
I'd just like to finish by thanking those behind uh, tonight's virtual open day, David and Laurie, for their help and assistance. I hope you've got to know us a little better tonight, um, and we hope that in the future we may get to see you face-to-face -face at Greenman Campus. Good night. Thank you.